this February, it will be 20 years of Pondicherry and 20 years in Pondicherry, Arvind. 2003 onwards. 23, yeah. 23 will be 20 years. Yeah. Okay. So next 15, 20 minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, try to do some justice to the title which I'm going to talk about achieving results and what at least uh, we have been trying to practice here as a team uh, bonding. So I, I think there are these seven mantras for achieving results and uh, we'll go through each one of them. And also for some of the mantras, I can share some of the real life examples which we have done here, at least in the recent past. The first is, I think, uh, any organization, I'm sure, has got a larger purpose. For example, in Arvind, is to eradicate needless blindness wherever it is. And for this purpose, I'm sure we should have a lot of goals in place which comes and changes every point of time. And these goals have to be measurable also. And when we have some of these goals, I, we have to assign the tasks to achieve these goals, keeping in mind the strength of individuals. The best way to increase the engagement in our staff is by implementing already proven methods, you know, already which is already existing, which is well proven, and it is very easily adaptable. The ones we can see immediate results, we can practice. And then look for new ideas, wherever it comes from, and experiment those ideas. We don't stop here. No, we have to constantly improve the work process. Again, incrementally making it better and better. And to do all this, you have to encourage your team constantly. And the last one is to give a kind of a very active feedback mechanism no, where we appreciate them, we recognize them, or it may be a feedback for improvement uh, and uh, a kind of a way where they can acknowledge the results which are achieved. So when we look at the larger purpose with the measurable goals, I think we have to keep the clear vision, goals and objectives in front of our staff. And we need to align our team to the institutional goals. Again, for example, maybe eradicating needless blindness or for example, in uh, 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 the Ganga Hospital in Coimbatore, they had a very clear institutional goal that no hand deformity should happen for anybody. No? So there are some very clear institutional goals and we need to align our team to those institutional goals and purpose. And to achieve that, you know, we have to kind of have sub-goals or we have to set goals beyond that and you combine them with measurable metrics. And it is very well known that people who have set goals are 10 times more likely to succeed than those without goals. I'll give you some of the examples which we normally, you know, we would like to achieve or have goals like this. To improve patient safety and quality or to improve patient-centered care in our hospitals. You know, we, we would like to say that you know, we want to reduce the complications. We want to reduce endophthalmitis. We want to have nil... Uh, adverse events or never events. We want to improve the uncorrected visual equity or improve the quality of electronic medical record or the quality of food in cafeteria. This can be more specific in some cases, you know, because if you are not very specific, sometimes we may not be able to really achieve that. For example, if you know your complication, intraoperative complication is 3%, how do you want to bring it down to 2%? You want to reduce your endophthalmitis from a certain percentage to a certain percentage. You want to improve your premium eye oil from a certain percentage to a certain percentage. It will be nice to have some of these goals and these goals to some extent have to be very specific. And that is where the SMART comes into picture. Any goal, you can use this, the SMART frame where the goals have to be specific. You have to define the goal as much as possible clearly. And that is where the 5W and 1H comes. I'll tell you briefly about that in the next slide. And the goals have to be kind of tracked. 
the progress needs to be tracked and also you have to measure the outcomes how much how many how will i know when my goal is accomplished so without anything being measured i'm sure we will have a lot of surprises as time goes on for example if somebody's goal is to be fit you know he has to kind of know in a kind of a measurable way you know i am 90 kgs now i have to set a goal of 80 kgs in the next 6 months something like that every goal should be definitely measurable and most of the times we have to kind of see that the goal is kind of attainable or achievable you know it is is it reasonably enough to be accomplished we we'll have to think through i cannot do something which is unattainable i cannot say my complication is 5% i want to get it down to 0% we should have something which is achievable we cannot say that if your premium lens is 5% you want to take it to 50% we should be trying to set attainable and achievable goals you now which are realistic which your team believes and also it should be relevant it it is a goal which is worth whether it's worthwhile whether it will meet our needs whether the goal is consistent with the other goals you have established and it fits with your immediate and long term plans so that is very important whether it is going to be very relevant you know why i am going to reduce my weight or why i am going to reduce the complication rate and also we should maintain a kind of a timeliness in this goals cannot be non specific or non time bound no you have to be time bound for example in 6 months in a year you want to bring down the complication rates we have to be time bound so that we do a weekly or monthly measurements to see where we are exactly so the most important thing now when we are specifying a goal this 5w1h framework is very important where you sit with the team and brainstorm by asking the right questions what why where when who and how what actually clearly says that clarifies and communicates what is the problem we want to address and why is to communicate why the problem should be addressed i'll give you some specific examples little later but this what and why is very important why can be repeatedly asked why should i solve this why should i solve this because there can be several whys to the problem where exactly the problem is where do you want to exactly solve it no and when do you want to resolve it is it like immediately or in a certain time and who you are going to be involved to solve this and finally you come up with a process you have a plan to do or how you are going to solve this this 5w1h you know if you try to practice in anything which you have you know any goal or any problem which you have i am sure you will come up with a nice how on how to do this uh, particular uh, new process or the new system to take care of the problem the second uh, mantra which uh, i was highlighting is to assign task keeping in mind the strength of individual so once you know how you are going to solve the goal once you know the how you no know, you identify your team who is going to do it identify the strength of your staff use goals as input and assign the task according to the strengths so this is very important now there are three things which are vital here one is the vital the essential and the desirable the vital is you now you you have to do it you know it is like the must haves and if you have to really do it you have to look for people who are really capable and competent to do that task so you give it to somebody who is capable and competent who is at a senior level like a manager or somebody who is you no know, you can rely on because he has already performed certain task uh, reliably and also who has shown results essential are things which is good to have you know you can involve somebody under the person who is supervising you know some staff with good attitude you now who will support the manager or the supervisor in doing that particular activity the third thing is kind of desirable things it's like nice to have you now you 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 may be able to manage even without that but it will be desirable to have so like engaging the trainees or the freshers in a place where you know you want to do certain activity you can use the trainees 
to do that kind of an activity is nice to have. When it comes to delegation of work, you now when you want to achieve some of these goals and you want to see results, delegation is very important. So again, delegation can be classified as something like have to, things you need to do and is under your direct responsibility. You know, like a boss or like a chief medical officer or CEO of a company, there are certain things which you have to do, you know, like communicating these goals to the people or communicating to your customers or communicating certain things to patients. You now this important activity, I think it's like have to. Certain things you can pass to, things that you can pass on to someone. For example, it, it, you, you, it may be a supervisor or a manager. If they think you, they are capable of doing it, then you pass certain things to them. Certain things you can train to in the delegation. Now, I can't delegate it today, but we can delegate it in the future after training. For example, it may be a new technology or a new uh, equipment now where you train somebody. Like, for example, we tried to do fundus imaging in eye camps. We didn't have anybody like that. So we trained people to do fundus imaging. So now we, we found some boys who are with basic degree and then we trained them to do fundus imaging so that we can delegate them in the future to do this activity. And choose to, you know, things which others can do, but still we choose to do. Like for example, a surgery. I, I still do cataract and glaucoma surgery because I choose to do because certain people still expect me to do, but I'm sure there are few people even if they can do better than me, but I still choose to do because I like to do that or you know, certain people still insist that you know, I do on them. So these are the things how you can delegate. Certain things which you have to do, you have to do. Certain things if you can pass it to somebody, you pass to. Certain things if you train, then you have to train those people and certain things uh, which others can do, but you still choose to do because you enjoy doing it. I'll give you one specific thing, you know, which we had some time back, like a specific goal was to reduce the rate of endophthalmitis. And uh, we had to do a lot of brainstorming on the 5W1H. And then we had very clear measurable goals. You know, we know that our endophthalmitis rate is 8 in 10,000. So we want to bring it down to a good extent, you know, which is at least like four in 10,000. Whether we was attainable, you no, know, we had to do a lot of uh, changes, but we know that it was attainable because uh, of the pre-existing strict aseptic protocols and also the introduction of intracameral moxifloxacin. And was it relevant? Yes, to assure a high quality cataract surgery. And, the time bound period was within a year. And here in this graph, you know, in this published evidence, you can beautifully see what happened from Jan, March 2011 to 18. So this gives a data of 2 million eyes where you can see the transition period. This is when we had this goal, you know, where we wanted to reduce the endophthalmitis. It was somewhere like 0 0.08, 0 0.09 in this period before 2014. And this is the transition period when few of our hospitals gave intracameral moxie and few hospitals were still following the historical way without intracameral antibiotic. The incidence had reduced to 0 0.05. And then it significantly reduced after 2015 when all the hospitals, 100% were giving intracameral moxifloxacin you can see that significant reduction. It became two in 10,000. So two cases in 10,000 add infection. So we had a very clear, smart goal in attaining this change in our uh, cataract surgery. And this has significantly impacted our work. This has significantly reduced endophthalmitis. So you know what happens if somebody develops an infection in the eye. It's so difficult to manage. You need to talk to him, the caregivers, you have to give them the care additional visits to the hospital. So all these things significantly reduced, but at the same time, we need to give antibiotic to every cataract patient who had surgery. So I'll share another example of what happened to our cataract referral from vision centers, especially during the pandemic times. So what was the problem we had to address? No, we, we had to address 
the multiple trips by patients who are referred from Vision Center for cataract surgery. They were coming actually three times to the base hospital, pre-operative, on the day of surgery, post-operative. And why this problem should be addressed? You know, we, we found that during COVID time, there were a lot of travel restrictions. They had to get e-pass. They have to take uh, share autos or they have to hire taxis. Cost went up. They had a lot of comorbidities. You know, they are diabetic. They had fear of getting infection. And they also had multiple caregivers to support at several trips to the hospital. And the significant carbon footprint was also there in the travel. So we know that you know, the why, if you ask the why, there will be several whys. So we were really thinking so much we can help by reducing the multiple trips. So where for the vision center patients? And when did we want to do it? We had to do it immediately because they were finding it difficult. The e-pass was in place. So they were not able to get the e-pass. So we had to do it immediately. So then we brainstormed and then we came up with a solution where we had to engage the vision center staffs and also the support team in the hospital. We had a manager who took care of the vision center and the team in the hospital you now who had to do something differently. And finally, how did we do that? There is a new system of uh, pre-operative workup. We had to little bit modify the system, something like this. So certain things were done in the vision center itself, like checking their intraocular pressure, syringing, blood sugar, even a physician fitness was taken with the local physician in that same town or village. And they came to the base hospital only on the day of surgery. So immediately they were given a badge called same day surgery. They, were, they already started using antibiotics. So the biometry was done. A doctor was seeing them after the biometry and then they went directly to surgery. And the next day follow-up again happened in the vision center. So now we made three trips for the patient into one trip. So that is where the power of that 5W1H is there and asking why, why, why we should solve this problem. So we really could understand that. No, we were just seeing that the patients are coming and having surgery and going. But then when we tried to understand what the problem is, no, coming three times to the base hospital wasn't that easy for somebody with diabetes, hypertension, obesity, all other systemic problems. They are elderly. So when we took into all this into consideration, now this has become a system. So even after the pandemic has settled down, lockdown restrictions are not there, we are still able to continue and give the benefit to our patients. And this has increased the surgery also. So if you see, we have kind of tracking the progress. We have a significant increase now. It's almost from 10, 20, 30. Now it is 36% in uh, May 2022. And it is still going to increase. We are trying to achieve almost 50% same day surgery by the end of this year. The third important mantra is to implement proven methods. Now, already there is something which is existing, which is done within your system or done elsewhere. You plan that system. You, know, you have a brainstorming and then you, you do that. And then you study the problems which come on the way and then you adjust and act accordingly. This is the PDSA which you do for implementing proven methods. For example, what we did again during pandemic is you now we had a lot of crowd in the hospital because only eye care provider there were not much space inside. So we decided that we'll schedule the new patients. So they will get appointments of a particular slot. Like even people coming at nine will get an appointment at 10, 30 or 11. So every 15 minutes, you know, the appointment slots will open for 10 to 15 patients. So we started doing this in our main hospital at Madurai. They implemented the scheduling system. They brainstormed. They had taken care of all the teething problems. And once it was done, we took it up and then we implemented this in Pondicherry also. So patients will get a kind of a time slot to enter into the hospital so that there is no overcrowding within the building where they are given the care. And then they get a token like this. And then you submit this token to the registration counter and your registration happens at that particular time. So this is basic, this is not an appointment. This is basically scheduling a time for your examination. So this really helped not only during the pandemic, now post-pandemic also, you know, all the centers have heavy rush, a lot of backlogs. 
And this system is really helping us. And now we are trying to improvise the system so that people can do online scheduling and V1 payment in the future. And the four important mantra for achieving a result is to look for new ideas. This is very important for any organization. Now you should allow your team to think for new ideas. You need to actively listen to those ideas. You know, you have to encourage the dialogue uh, between your team members. And also you need to look for ideas from outside and experiment those new ideas. A London Business School professor, uh, Kamalini Ramdas once said, you need to build a company where everyone is looking for new ideas. And she was quoting Aravind as an example for it. So I'll share with you some of the things which we changed and we also were able to achieve very good results because of that is like improving the quality of medical record registration. So normally this is how most hospitals do registration, right? And at the end of the day, we found that the address are not right, the contact numbers are wrong, and uh, somewhere we were not able to really fix it. We were trying to improve, but it wasn't working. And then that's the same time we saw other registration happening. This was in uh, late 2000. And if you see, they had dual screens, now where you can take your uh, iris uh, picture and you can check your bank account, things like that. Then we thought, why don't we try this idea in our system? You know, we put a dual screen for the patients to verify the information, especially the contact numbers, you know, to check that before you save and print the record. So this significantly reduced the errors related to medical record registration. So looking for ideas like this, social distancing during pandemic, you know, ideas can come from anywhere. So they tried to put a tag like this or put a sticker, the cross, but finally, people keep their bags. Children used to sit. So again, you need to mop the seats and things like that. So one of our housekeepers came up with a brilliant idea. She said, sir, can we remove the central seat? I said, it's a brilliant idea. We can do that. And this was there for almost like one and a half years during the pandemic. You know, we removed the central. So you can't keep anything now there. No, you can't sit either. Wheelchair movement. So ideas can come from anywhere you know? so this is again an idea which came from one of our patients so uh, they said you no know, negotiating in this crowded corridors is very difficult so can you fix a small bell to the wheelchair and the patient in fact sent a bell with the letter through a courier saying that please fix this and see brilliant idea so once we introduce this bell system now you can, it makes a small uh, uh, sound so that people would immediately give way when the wheelchair is being negotiated and moving in the hospital. So ideas like this can come from anywhere and you, you, you experiment, you implement it, and then you can see results of that. So this is an idea or a thing which we are practicing now. Now we have kind of uh, uh, got this uh, from, uh, again, the London Business School professor Kamalini. So this is a Cleve Cleveland Clinic method where they shared medical appointments for chronic diseases like obesity and COPD. We thought, why don't we do that for glaucoma and see what happens? So we did a lot of brainstorming. We did this 5W1H exercise. No, we came up with a plan and we did a big trial, in fact, to compare one-on-one -on -one versus shared medical appointments. So you can see this five people are sharing in the same room, their appointment with me or with my colleague, Dr. Kavita. The idea is all have primary glaucoma, all have the same kind of problem. But when you talk to them, the information goes to everyone. And we, we found that the awareness of the disease, their follow-up rate, their knowledge about glaucoma improved in the shared medical appointments. And now we are trying to see whether we can make this into our regular system. So this is how you constantly kind of look at goals and you try to achieve results. And you cannot stop there. You, can, you have to keep constantly improving the work process. So you have to do regular status updates. You know, either be an individual if you want to weight loss, you, know, you have to regularly measure your weight. If it's a team, you have to see what is the team achievement or an institution. And you analyze and improve your work process and try to do some positive reinforcement to your team members. So 
so you not only analyze what went well you know and what did not go well and how it can be sustained so this is one set the other set is what didn't go well and then why it did not go well and how it can be improved so if you keep analyzing this and you know, all constantly i'm sure we can improve the work process so this is another quick example before i finish is what happened in our counseling area now we constantly kept improving our counseling so that the patients are counseled for cataract surgery in a better way but somewhere there was a significant waiting time because they had to take some time to talk to them about different lenses the lens options are growing now so you can see a big crowd waiting always there so we critically analyzed you know we have improved lot of things but now also in the recent past we have introduced something like this where we have divided the counselors into three teams a b and c a is people who are new patients first time they are going to undergo surgery they don't know anything about the different lens options the b are patients who have come within a month after their counseling the c is other eye surgery so once we kind of segregated or divided them into three different groups and we had three different rooms which can do that that significantly reduced the waiting time of these patients because we engaged the right people to do that the room a had an employee you know who had an experience and the trainee were observing them how to do the room b had a junior level employee but the room c which is the second eye surgery even a trainee can easily manage i mean this is sheer delegation there which helped us to improve the patient care before every patient was waiting in an order so sometimes when you have new patients going to some of the counselors it blocked the whole system by kind of dividing this work and delegating it to the right people we were able to achieve very good results so once you see the results or you know when the process of new things are happening i mean you need to encourage your team members sometimes they get lost somewhere you no know? the people get stuck and uh, especially at during the end so we have to be really with them and help them find those problems and solve it and finally you know this is very important to get to track and share the feedback you know you need to also give your feedback to them and keep communicating to them and if things are good things are happening well you can also have a rewarding system so with this opportunity again thank uh, dr manohar babu and uh, sashi for organizing this excellent webinar thank you thank you dr venkesh um, we, we we could go all day listening to whatever innovations that you as a leader have been initiating at uh, arvind pondicherry